we are very proud to announce UMP Trading as an official partner with a proven profit track record. Yeah, if you want great returns on your investments, be sure to check out UMP Trading. Hello everyone and welcome back to the AUC Talks channel. Today I'm here with Shrey and we're going to be going over a couple of the dual nationals that have been in the news recently. Luca Kolyasho and Amir Richardson, the main two that we need to prioritize realistically. Obviously we have a, a, a big history with dual nationals, you know, Balaga and Musa, Des, etc. But now the, the ones that we need to focus on are Kolyosha and Richardson. And I think these two are going to be a little bit harder than some of the ones we've gotten in the past. I mean, they've kind of broken onto the scene over the past couple of years. Uh, obviously, Kolyosha has turned into a Premier League starter, which I don't think anyone would have expected. And Amir Richardson now playing in France uh, with Balogun's old club. And yeah, so the first question is about going to be about Kolyosha. And obviously, he's eligible for four different countries, which is almost unheard of, honestly. It's, it's really impressive for a, a quadruple national. It's a really rare occurrence. And basically, my first question is going to be, what country do you think he's most likely to represent? Yeah, I do think it is Italy. I'm not going to lie. It just seems that he has his heart set on Italy, which is unfortunate. But you, you look at his Instagram, you scroll the pictures, his profile pictures of him winning the U19 Euros. He's got a couple pictures with like Italy and stuff like that. He has a picture with Canada, which is interesting. But honestly, uh, to any Canadians, if you guys are out there, I don't think he's going to choose you guys at all. I think it's really in between the US and Italy. I think he has his heart set on Italy, but hopefully Greg can do some wheeling and dealing and get him to join us. Yeah, for sure. I think my original thoughts about last year, maybe two years ago, when this guy first appeared on the scene with Espanol was that Canada was actually his main option just because he was the, they were the country that he's had most contact with. And honestly, I did not expect him to be that great of a player. I didn't think Italy was even in the realm of possibility, but obviously he's had a huge breakout uh, over the last year, obviously getting called up to their U19 team, winning the Euros, moving to Burnley and instantly becoming a starter in the toughest league in the world, which, I mean, we've seen them call up players like Willy Nyanto from Leeds last year. And I think it, considering that, Koliosha is a, a, a similar caliber player. So he is definitely within Italy's considerations now. So I think obviously out of the four countries, they are the most prestigious when it comes to history uh, in the score. Uh, it's, not unfair to say that definitely and i think if he does get the call up i think he'll be forced to accept but i do think that we are now his second option over canada just because of the profile of player he is and our history with dual nationals and i know there has been a lot of contact between him and greg and i think it's going to be basically kind of another balogun situation where he's going to wait it out if he gets the italy call up similar to balogun with england he'll take it but if he doesn't soon he's going to have to make his decision because like we've mentioned in previous videos there's really not a lot of time before these major competitions the euros and the cup america which italy and the usa should both be competing in this summer obviously our respective competitions and the world cup in a couple of years so he's gonna need to make his decision sooner rather than later to get integrated into the team in time so that's my thoughts on that and i, I do kind of want to add that these dual nationals now are going to be a lot more difficult and we kind of aren't really used to losing them. Obviously, we've had a lot of success with Tillman, Dest, Musa, Balogun, even Ricardo Pepe's and Dejas, Christopher Lund. And recently, I mean, we had Tyler Binden, who maybe not a lot of you know, but I was really high on a center back. He chose New Zealand over us just because they actually called him up to their senior spot immediately, which we weren't going to do, which kind of sucks for us because he's a player I rate really highly. But I think he's going to be the first of maybe a couple that we actually lose, which is very uncharacteristic for us. And now moving on to another player who maybe isn't as likely to pick us, Amir Richardson, the Moroccan dual national. Stray, what are your thoughts on our chances for him? I think they're even worse than Coleo shows. Um, he seems dead set on Morocco, and honestly, I can't blame the guy. I mean, Morocco, with, with their team, with what they've achieved recently, making the semifinals, first African national team to do that, and just their national team in general. I mean, it's an incredible national team. They're offering him 
a lot. I mean, they've been recruiting him for a long time, and he genuinely seems happy to be playing for Morocco. You look at his Instagram again, there's so many Moroccan pictures. There's even a couple pictures. There's a picture of him with France like two years ago or so. But yeah, I, France, I think there's no shot of him choosing France because I mean, France's depth is just unreal. And yeah, so I think Morocco is going to get him for sure. I, that doesn't mean we shouldn't recruit him. We definitely should recruit him, especially considering our depth at the sixth position. We absolutely need a backup six when we have players like Acosta still being considered, which again, Acosta is good in the Gold Cup in the 2021. It's 2023. We need a proper backup. And Look, we've got players like Tessman, and look, Tessman, I'm I'm not giving up on him at all, but we saw what he did in the friendlies versus Uzbekistan, and it wasn't great. So he needs a lot of room to improve, Tessman. And Cardoso, honestly, it seems, as Yuri has mentioned quite a bit in the group chat, that he tends to excel as a 10 or an 8, and not even as a 6. So, yeah, so... It seems that we absolutely really need a backup six, and obviously Musa can play there, but again, I think we need someone that's actually a six being our backup to Adams. So we need to recruit Richardson heavily, but I, I think, honestly, I think it's really a done deal. I think he's playing for Morocco. Yeah, I, I agree with that for sure. And I think it's interesting that you mentioned him at the six because it is a position that he can play, but I do kind of see him in a similar role to Johnny where I think he's a little bit more attacking minded, but I think he, he's definitely comfortable in the six and it is important, especially as we saw Tanner Tessman kind of underwhelmed in his chance. It is nice that he got a chance, he did deserve it, but it wasn't the impression I think he wanted to make. And there's still guys like Leonard Maloney is playing in the Bundesliga now but he hasn't really had a chance and that position is really up for grabs so he is a player that I think we should definitely be doing our best to get but I, I agree with you I think he's all but a done deal to Morocco and honestly part of the reason I was so excited to make this video is so I can tell our fan base stop getting your hopes up about him because I see so many Instagram posts from our fan pages uh, like about him and it, it just kind of makes me mad honestly because <laughs> It's kind of it's delusional in my opinion to even consider that we might get him. Obviously, you never say never, especially with our history of dual nationals. But if Morocco gives him a call up, he's gonna say yes. He's already featured with the U twenty threes, and I I, I don't want to say we should stop wasting our time with him. But I think there's players like Kolyosho who are more important, and either even like Tyler Binden who put on it. I think if we prioritize more, maybe we could have got him. And yeah, so final question is, what would you say our percent chances are of getting these two players? Yeah, I'll just, I already said for Richardson, I honestly think it's 0%, but just cause you can never say never, I'll just throw out 5% chance of getting Richardson. In terms of Kolyosho, I, I think we've got, we still have a decent chance. His heart is still set on Italy, but I, I think we do have a shot. I'd say maybe like a 40% chance. Cause just because of Italy's depth, I mean, it is unbelievable. But I mean, does does Kolyosho really want to play for a national team that hasn't qualified for the last two World Cups? I mean, come on, dude. So, um, yeah, but Kolyosho, I th think just because it's much more likely that we get him, I think he's someone that we absolutely need to get. And Kolyosho is someone that I'd obviously love to have. It just seems like there's no way that we're getting him. And Kole Osher, as you already mentioned, I mean, he looks like he belongs in the Premier League, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I remember hearing about him at Espanol a couple years ago, but I just never really thought of him as a big player, someone that could potentially do anything. And even when he scored last season for them, I just thought like, oh, that's cool. But I never really thought that he would be the player that he is right now. I mean, great assist versus Tottenham. And absolutely torched Montiel, a World Cup winner. I mean, when they played, when Burnley played Nottingham Forest. So, yeah, he looks like a player that belongs in the Prem. And given our winger depth, when players like Zendejas are in contention for a spot, and some fans even say Jordan Morris, which is absolutely wild. 
I mean, come on, Claudio shows clear of both of them in my opinion, and we absolutely need him. So th- that's my thoughts on Claudio show and Richardson. Yeah, and I think even players like Kate Cal and Kevin uh, Paredes. Uh, this might be a hot take, but I think Claudio shows head and shoulders above both of them. I know Paredes has been one of our highest rated prospects out of the U twenty group for a while now, but I'm a lot more convinced by Claudio show. I mean. You could even argue he's put out better performances in the prem than Pulisic had last year, which for someone who's supposed to be our best player, it says a lot about Kolyosha's ability to adapt, especially at such a young age. And I think that ability would definitely be seen if we did call him up. I think he'd fit in seamlessly with our team. And yeah, I kind of agree with you about the percentages. I would say zero for Richardson. Maybe I'll give it a one percent because anything's possible. And I think forty percent is definitely fair for Kolyosha. Like I said earlier, if Italy call him up, he'll 100% take it. And this is probably the weakest Italy we might have seen maybe ever. I mean, like you said, they haven't qualified for the past two World Cups. Honestly, their position at qualifying for the Euros isn't guaranteed at any stretch right now. They've still got to battle it out with Ukraine. So, yeah, with, with a week into Italy, I think they'll be desperate to get this one. But if they don't call him up, maybe we could see him not in the October friendlies, but the next camp for the U.S. So I think 40 is pretty fair. And I think he will have to make his decision quickly. And I know I said the last one was the last question, but just one more thing quickly to end off the video. Do you have any ideas for who the next big dual nationals would be after these two battles are decided? Yeah, so in terms of other dual nets, we should recruit. Um, there's none that are on the level of Kolyosha and Richardson, but we certainly have some good promising ones, such as, you know, Rodrigo Neri from at Atletico Madrid, someone that, you know, is training with the first team. I mean, obviously he's not going to play for Atletico, but it's good to see that he's training for, that he's training with the first team. I think that's really impressive. And obviously Kramashi at Inter Miami. I mean, he's playing with Messi. He's having a good season. So he's absolutely someone that we should recruit. So those are my main two dual nets that we should be recruiting right now. Yeah, those are great picks. And also Noel Buck, the English dual national. I, I have called him a traitor on the channel in the past, but listen, if he wants to represent us, I will take back all criticism because I, I do think he's that good of a player. And I, I think he's better than Kumaski, which is definitely going to be something that is a hot take, especially with all the new inner Miami fans because of Messi. But anyways, that's going to be the end of the video, guys. Thank you to everyone who watched this far to end of the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And comment down below, what do you think of our chances on Kolyosho and Richardson? What did you think maybe about Benzin? And who are other dual nationals maybe that deserve attention? Because there's a lot of young potential USMNT players on the rise right now. And a lot of them are dual nationals as well. So let us know in the comments. Put us on to some young players. Thank you, Shrey, for coming out for this video. I think it was a good one. I think dual national videos are definitely something we should continue to do in the future. So like I said, let us know in the comments who should we cover next. And thank you for watching, everyone.